Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Savelle. Thank you for joining me today. We're in Fort Worth, Texas at the Kenneth Copeland Southwest Believers Convention where I just got through speaking on a message I called, God is not going to let you fail. It's a powerful message and I want to take you into that meeting where I was preaching this and I believe it's going to bring great inspiration and it's going to cause your faith to reach another level. So I want you to listen very closely, take notes if at all possible, and I believe once again you're going to cause, it's going to cause your faith to go to another level. God is not going to allow you to fail. No matter what you're going through right now, I like to say this, it's never over until God says it's over, and God will never say it's over until you win. You're the winner that God has called you to be, so stay in faith, don't give up, and God is going to bring you through. Watch now, and I'll be back in just a few moments. Open your Bibles, if you will, first of all, to Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31. In fact, why don't, why don't you do this? Why don't you go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, and I'll read something from Deuteronomy 31. And there's several other verses I'm going to read before I go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. And I want you to see if you can pick out in all these verses that I will start with something that you hear in every one of them, something that's mentioned in each one of these verses. I'll begin with Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid, for the Lord thy God will not fail thee. The message translation says, don't be intimidated. Don't give a second thought because God won't let you down. This is repeated basically the same words, almost the same words in Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8 and in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5. And in Joshua 21 verse 45, the message translation says, not one word failed from all God spoke to the house of Israel. Everything came out right. And 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 56, there hath not failed one word of all his good promises which he promised. And then David said to his son Solomon in 1 Chronicles 28, 20, be strong and of good courage, fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord thy God will not fail thee. And then Zephaniah chapter three and verse five, the just Lord is in the midst thereof, he faileth not. Anybody notice something common in every one of those verses? I have an announcement to make to you today. God is not going to let you fail. I said, God is not going to let you fail. I'm going to try on this side of the auditorium. God is not going to let you fail. Can you say amen to that? God is not going to let you fail. Amen. In Psalm 89, 1, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. To all generations. That have to include our generation. The message translation says, I'm forever telling everyone how faithful you are. And now go to Deuteronomy chapter 7 and look at verse 9. Know therefore, the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that loveth him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Amen. God is faithful. Say it with me. God is faithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, God is faithful by whom ye were called into fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. The Passion Translation says, God is forever faithful and can be trusted. What good news that is, amen? amen. God is forever faithful and can be trusted. 
You know, difficulties and tests and trials and adversity are common to us who believe. We're not exempt from them. Everybody has them. Everybody's faced them. I've said this many times. I want to repeat it. It's my sermon. I can say it again if I want to. (laughs) I was preaching with Brother Roberts a number of years ago at the Maybe Center in Tulsa, ORU. And Brother Roberts said, I'm going to preach first, then you close it out. And then you pray for the people. I said, all right. And so uh, after he turned it over to me, I preached my sermon. And then I invited people to come forward for prayer. And there was quite a number of people in that prayer line. And one man, when I walked up to him and I said, what do you need? What do you want me to pray about? He said, I want you to pray that I will never have another test, another trial, or any more adversity. So I said, okay. I laid my hands on him. I said, Lord, let this man die. He said, I don't want to die. I said, well, sir, that's the only way I know that you can never have any more adversity, never another test or another trial. You have to, you have to die and leave the planet. As long as you're on this planet, uh, you'll be faced with adversity. He said, well, I don't want to die. I laid my hands back on him. I said, Lord, let him live. (laughs) Jesus said, in the world, you will have tribulation, but it didn't end there. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And you say, amen. Amen. Look at somebody and put on your best cheer. Amen. That's what I identify with. I, I, I know that I'll be faced with tests and trials as long as I'm on this planet. But that doesn't mean that you have to give in to them. It doesn't mean that you have to be defeated by them. My focus is on Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Can you say amen? Amen. So as long as you're on this planet, you're going to be faced with tests and trials from time to time. Go with me to Psalm 34, if you will. And while you're turning there, I just want to say again, God is not going to let you fail. Verse seven says, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O taste and see that the Lord is good and blessed is the man that trusteth in him. How many of you want to be blessed? Then keep your trust in him. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. And they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Verse 17, the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. How many? All. How many? All. all their trouble. He delivers them out of all their trouble. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. And many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now, it wouldn't be proper for you to stop reading right there because the next word is but. I'm not an English scholar, but I did learn when I was in school as a young boy that but is the conjunction and it means he's not through talking and thou shalt not stop reading. Amen? (laughs) So even though many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. So I expect, no matter what kind of adversity I experience, that I will be delivered out of it. I've got my eyes on him. I'm trusting his word. I'm depending on him being faithful to me as he was in all those other verses that we read earlier to those people back then. In fact, Paul said all of those stories were written for our benefit, that we might have hope. My hope is in God today. 
I'm trusting him. No matter what comes my way or what comes our way, God has promised that he will deliver us from all our trouble. Somebody give him a good shout of praise. Amen. He's not going to allow us to fail. Now, the Passion Translation for Psalm 34, 19 says, even when bad things happen to good and godly ones, the Lord will save them and not be, not let them be defeated by what they face. How many of you have faced some adversity over the last few months during this pandemic? A lot of people are hurting right now. A lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are going without. A lot of people have lost their jobs. A lot of people have, have ended up using all of their hard earned savings just to exist, just to keep their head above water. But God is not going to allow us to fail. I like to say this. I've said it many times and I'll keep saying it. It's never over until God says it's over and God will never say it's over until we win. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? So it's not over yet. You know, uh, last September, Brother Copeland and I were flying to Australia and uh, we left here in his plane and flew to Honolulu and stopped for just a short time to refuel. And uh, we were on the ground not more than an hour or so. And then we got back on the plane and, and went on to the Gold Coast. And uh, a couple of days later, we started the meeting there. So uh, he and I had had wonderful conversation uh, all the way from Fort Worth to Honolulu, uh, had, had, had a good time together. And then maybe a couple of hours later, Brother Copeland said, uh, I'm going to go back in the back of the airplane and take a nap. And uh, uh, if you want to come back, they've got a, a sofa made out for you for you can take a nap as well. I said, well, you go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to just sit here for a while longer. I'm not really sleepy. And I, I, I began a book that I was reading uh, before we got on the plane in Fort Worth. So I think I'll just keep reading that book. And if I get sleepy, I, I may come back there. I'll just lean back in the seat here and, and go to sleep. So uh, he went to the back of the airplane. And this was around September, I believe the 9th, somewhere along in there. I really didn't have 2020 on my mind. I hadn't even thought about 2020. Usually about October, I will set time aside to listen to the Lord as to what's on his agenda for the coming new year. But this was September, so I really hadn't been thinking about that. And so Brother Copeland went back to the back and, and uh, I, I got the book out of my briefcase and, and I didn't even actually start reading it. I just had it in my lap. And I just leaned back for a moment and closed my eyes, just thinking about something, not really taking a nap. And I just closed my eyes and suddenly I heard the Spirit of God say, in 2020, I will open a new door and bring about supernatural increase beyond anything you've ever experienced before. Well, there was no resting then. I wrote that down. In 2020, I will open a new door and bring about supernatural increase like you've never experienced before. And I said, well, Lord, is this just me you're talking about? And he said, no, it's for my faithful ones. And I consider you to be a faithful one. Amen. How many of you consider yourself to be a faithful one? Amen. Then look at somebody and say, now that's for me, praise God. I, I asked the Lord, I said, why didn't you say doors plural? And he simply said, all it takes is one. All it takes is one door and God can bring about supernatural increase beyond anything you've ever experienced before. Now, I, I began studying that and when we got to Australia, uh, we didn't start the meeting until an, another day or two later. 
and I studied it uh, the whole time I was there and uh, uh, preached a little bit about it while I was there. And then when I got home, uh, particularly during the month of October, I started preaching it at our church for about three or four weeks. And, and then I, I began preaching it all over the world since then, up until about March of this year uh, when everything shut down. And I have experienced supernatural increase beyond anything I've ever experienced before. And I've experienced supernatural increase for a long, long time. I've had supernatural increase take place in my life and ministry ever since I've been in the ministry, but not like what I've experienced over the last few months. Hallelujah. See, I believe this stuff. Let me repeat it. I believe this stuff. I, I, I take it as God speaking and when God speaks, even E.F. Hutton listens. <laughs> Remember that old commercial with E.F. Hutton? When E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. Well, when God talks, I listen. And I expect the same thing that I read a few moments ago about not one word from God has failed. I expect what he says to come to pass. And it's already happening. I've already experienced a door that has opened to me and opened to this ministry and it has brought about supernatural increase. But then I notice that once one door opens, others follow. It's like a domino effect. Once that one door opens, then it seems like they just keep opening. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, Lord, open that door for me. Let me give you an example. I bought a piece of property probably 25 years ago that I paid probably, I don't remember exact figure, but I know it was, it was under a quarter of a million dollars. I want to say roughly about $240,000 years ago and just been sitting on it all this time. And just recently, I was offered $2.5 million for it. Hallelujah. I'd call that a door. <laughs> Amen. I'd call that a new door that opened to me. Hallelujah. And we're getting ready to build a new auditorium and praise God through uh, what's happened over the last few months. We're going to be able to pay cash when we build the new auditorium. Praise God. Amen. And that's just one piece of property I bought years ago. You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a country boy. I was, I was born on a farm in Mississippi. And I like my space. I don't like living in town. I don't like being able to hear my neighbors brush their teeth. You know what I'm talking about? I like the country. And we, we lived in the city here in Fort Worth for a short period of time, but I didn't like it. And I told Carolyn, you go find me some land. And so she went out and, and found uh, just about five acres of land out on the south side of Fort Worth. Uh, it was nothing out there at that time. And uh, she talked to the man that owned it and, and we arranged to buy it. And, and uh, it had a little small uh, house on it, wood frame house that he'd built in 1946. And so we bought the place and, um, and then Carolyn comes from a building family. Her, her dad came over and brought some of his brothers who were all builders and they started redoing the place and, and um, enlarged it and so forth. And we lived in it for a while like that. And, and then we, we gave that land to the ministry and built our ministry headquarters out there and then started buying some other land around it. And then we built our home next door to it that we live in now. So the Lord has pressed upon me to buy up all the land I could get my hands on around there. And this was when, uh, you know, nobody was really selling. Uh, they didn't have any signs up around there for sale. 
uh, we just was being led by the Spirit of God to go to different, different ones and so forth. Or every once in a while, somebody would come to me and say, would you like to buy this land? And so we'd buy five acres here, 10 acres there, 20 acres here. We wound up with nearly 200 acres. And uh, uh, bought a, uh, a church around the corner from us, a Baptist church. Uh, and uh, I, was, I was riding my motorcycle one morning on a Saturday morning, and, and I rode by this Baptist church just around the corner from us. I'd never met the pastor. And as I was riding by there, the Lord said, uh, that belongs to you. I've arranged for you to have that. And it had about 10 acres with it. So I, I called uh, Joe McCroskey, who was my general manager, and I said, uh, call that pastor and find out what's going on there and told him what the Lord said. And so he called him and he said, uh, well, that's amazing. Last night, Friday night, we had a, a church meeting and somebody had given us some land in another part of town and we had this land and they had just built that building. It was just a couple of years old. And he said, uh, and we didn't really know where God wanted us to be here or on that new property. And he said, so I called a special meeting last night and told the church we're going to put both properties up for sale and whichever one sells first, then we'll know we're supposed to be in the other property. And he said, that's amazing. Your boss rode by here yesterday and said that the Lord told him this was his property. He said, we haven't even, we haven't even listed it yet. We just talked about it last night. And the Lord impressed upon me to buy it. And we did. And, uh, and then he impressed upon me to buy all the land around it. So it started out with 10 acres and I wound up with 80 acres. <laughs> now at the time, I had no idea and nobody else out there did either. And let me, let me add this. The Lord impressed upon me when I was buying all this land, get the mineral rights. Get the mineral rights. Amen. Amen. And so we stated that we wanted to buy the land. We pay cash for it and we wanted the mineral rights. And so that was in the contract. Now, nothing was going on back in those days where gas wells or anything was concerned. Nobody was talking about it. But years later, they discovered gas on all that property. And all of a sudden, we got people coming to our office bidding to lease the land to drill gas wells. Hallelujah. <laughs> and when that first gas well came in, man, it was a blessing. In fact, how many of you remember the old movie Giant with Rock Hudson, Elizabeth Taylor, James Dean, and you remember when James Dean uh, found uh, oil on his property? And the next thing he did is he bought that Cadillac, put them bull horns on the hood. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> I wanted to drive around Fort Worth with bull horns on my hood, you know, just like James Dean did, you know. And it was, I mean, it was a blessing. In fact, over a period of time, those gas wells produced $3 million royalties. Amen. And we built buildings and paid cash and we helped other ministries all over the world in building buildings and orphanages and, and so forth. And, and it, it was a great blessing. And now here again, God has opened a new door and bringing about supernatural increase. Like I heard Jesse say a few moments ago, my ministry has not suffered at all during this time. And I, I've been out twice since March. I went to uh, uh, Missouri one night and I went to Arkansas one night to Tracy Harris's church. That's the only two places I've been since March the 15th. Now I preached to Brother Copeland in his uh, virtual meetings, you know, from Eagle Mountain, but that's the only place I've been. 
And we haven't suffered at all. In fact, my accountant said uh, just back in April, Brother Jerry, you've been in the ministry 51 years and this is the best April we've ever had in the history of the ministry, praise God. Amen. Now, in the natural, you wouldn't think that God would say in 2020, you're going to experience supernatural increase beyond anything you've ever experienced before. Did he not know what was coming? Yes, he did. Do you need God to meet your financial needs? Have you ever wondered how to convince God to bless you? Today's special offer contains Jerry Savelle's prophetic book, Principles of Supernatural Increase, and his three CD series, Increase God's Way. In this revealing special package, Dr. Jerry Savelle clearly sets forth the biblical principles of supernatural increase, including your covenant right to increase, how God moves supernaturally, and common deceptions that bring poverty and defeat. God desires that you move to a higher level in every area of your life, spiritually, financially, professionally, and socially. You don't have to convince God to bless you. It's already His plan. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Supernatural Increase Special Package. Embracing these principles on a consistent basis, you'll soon experience supernatural increase as never before. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a joy sharing the Word with you, but we're not through. I want to encourage you to join me again next week as we continue talking about God is not going to let you fail. Once again, we'll bring you into the Believers Convention here in Fort Worth, and I'm going to be talking about how that you can be and continue to be the winner that God wants you to be. I want to encourage you once again to order the resources we've made available this week. My new book entitled Supernatural Increase, Principles of Supernatural Increase. This is right hot off the press, and I want to encourage you to place your order for it. And then also three CDs entitled Increase God's Way. I don't know about you, but I want things done God's way, and I want the Bible results that God promises me. So these materials are available to you this week. So if you'll go on our website and look up how that you can order it, or just look on the screen right now, and it'll give you all the ordering information, and order them, and we'll get them to you as quick as we possibly can. Once again, join me again next week as we continue talking about God is not going to let you fail. And remember, your faith will overcome the world.